This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Glasses before I begin. Okay, good afternoon everyone. We just came back from a beautiful learning program in Santa Clara. But tonight is Rosh Chodesh Elul. Okay, before we begin, I just want to... Uh, you know, many people have this small device that's able to make telephone calls. Do they come to Panama yet? It's called cell phone, okay? The first step is turn it off. Okay, got that? Off. Second step is away. I don't want to see it. I don't want to look at it. Nothing. It's out. Away. Thank you. You can take pictures now. You want to take pictures? Now's the time. <laughs> Tonight is Rosh Chodesh Elul. Elul is the final month of the year. Many sources teach us that while the word Elul is Persian in origin, nevertheless, it has a symbolic meaning. The word Elul stands for four words. Ani ledodi vedodili. I am for my beloved, I am for God, and my beloved God, He's for me. This is the month that we wholeheartedly dedicate ourselves to the service of the Almighty, and the Almighty is dedicated to us to forgive our sins. Ani ledodi vedodili. But here's a million dollar question. You know, God has many names. Ado and then Nai, Shakai, Tzvakot, Elohim, God has many names. Seldom, rarely, do we refer to Hashem as my beloved. Why all of a sudden when we come to Chodesh Elul, oh, Ani ledodi vedodi li. Why do we refer to God as Dodi in the month of Elul? Why not? Ashkenazim don't say Hashem's name unless it's in a pasuk. But... Ado, and then Nai, why don't we refer to him as Ani Lashem, Bashem Li, Ani Lelokim, Lelokim Li. Why Dodi? Why refer to God as Dodi in the month of Elo? I'm going to share with you a secret now. This is a secret that most people are not familiar with, and even when I share it, people don't believe it. This is not commonly said. The Pasuk says, Yisa Hashem Panav. Elecha. God will carry your iniquity. Says the Midrash, Yachol Lakol. I would think God forgives everyone's sin if they do tshuva. Says the Midrash, Talmud Lomar, Elecha velo l'umot olam. Did you know that the Gentiles cannot repent? They can't do tshuva. Did you know that? Only Yisrael, only a Jew. Only a Jew is given the gift of repentance to tshuva. Why would that be? Does Teshuvah work or does it not work? Is it a mechanism or is it not a mechanism? You know, in the real world, as they say, there is no concept of Teshuvah. You know, imagine somebody commits a crime. He robs a bank. And we have witnesses. And we take the guy and we bring him to the court. And the judge is standing there and he says, Sir, did you commit the crime? He says, I plead guilty. But I feel really bad about it. Please forgive me. So the judge says, oh. And he says, I'll never do it again. The judge says, you bet you'll never do it again. Because behind the bars in prison, you will never do this again. Yeah, but I feel so bad. I'll, I, I have remorse. I have regret. That's very nice. In the real world, there's no concept of teshuva. You commit a crime... You pay the price. You can't wipe out something that happened. Hashem gives a special gift. The gift is, even if we make a mistake and we commit an Avera, we could perform teshuva. We could repent and wipe the sin away. And the Midrash tells us that only the Jewish people are able to do teshuva. The nations of the world are not able to do teshuva. Why? Why would that be? How do we explain why Teshuvah is only for the Jewish people and not for the nations of the world? And herein we come to a very important teaching. 
The teaching is, we read in last week's parasha. You ready for the pasuk? Banim atem l'ashem elokechem. You are the children of Hashem. Even though you may hear that the nations of the world all say, after all, we're all the children of the living God. It's rubbish, it's nonsense, it's not true. We're not all the children of God. We're all the handiwork of God. We are all God's creations. We are not all, of his, all his children. Only the Jewish people are the children of Hashem. By the way, you know, what does that even mean? A child is the biological DNA of the father and mother. So what does it mean we are the children of Hashem? The Mikubalim teach us. The soul of the Jew is literally a piece of the divine where we emanate to whatever extent this is possible. We literally emanate from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Jewish people are the spiritual children of Hashem. So what? The nations of the world, their relationship with God is Hashem is their melech, their king, and they are his subjects. We are the children of Hashem, and He, he, he is our Father. So now let's explain. There's a very important halacha. You know, technically speaking, when a father or mother walk into a room, the children are supposed to stand up. Yeah, lots of luck, right? Pulling that off. But that's the technical halacha. Father and mother walk into the room, children stand up. Could a child sit in the father's chair? No. Could a child sit in the mother's chair? Technically, no. You go to the Beit HaKneset. The father has his, you know, we call it a shtender, his, his place in the Beit HaKneset. Is a child allowed to stand there? No. The father comes home from work, the kid is sitting in his chair. The, the kid sitting in the father's chair, the father could say, stay, stay, it's okay, sit in my chair, no problem, stay there. Av shemachal al kivodo, kivodo machol. A father could forego his honor. However, melech, a king, shemachal al kivodo, ein kivodo machol. A king cannot overlook his honor. If someone insults the king, someone rebels against the king, does the king have the right to say, it's okay, I'm anav, I'm very humble, it's okay that you insulted me. A king is not halachically allowed to overlook his honor. Therefore, the Jewish people are able to perform teshuvah because God is our father and we are his children. And he could say, you know what, you did this avera, you didn't fulfill you do teshuvah, machol, you're forgiven. But the nations of the world, their relationship with God, with God is not that of a child to a father. It's of a servant to a master, a servant to a king. And a king cannot overlook his honor. So we begin the month of Elul and we say, this is the month of teshuvah. How does teshuvah work? The answer is Ani le Dodi because he's our beloved father. Vidodili. In this month we have to emphasize, we have to focus on, we have to recognize that we are doing Teshuva. Ashrecha Yisrael, Rabbi Akiva says. Lifne mi atem mitaharin. Before whom do we purify ourselves? Lifne Avinu Shabashamayim. It's not before our Melech, it's before our father. And a father could forgive us. A king will not forgive us. But now I want to share with you what we call premium teshuvah. You know, in America, we have different kinds of credit cards. You could have a regular credit card. You could have a signature card. You could have a platinum card. And then you could have premium. Premium. Today we're going to learn about Premium Teshuvah. Premium Teshuvah. What's Premium Teshuvah? This is the kind of Teshuvah that we are aiming for. The Gemara teaches us there are two types of Teshuvah. Let's say a person does an Avera, and then they realize, wait a second, I committed an Avera. You know, this is not a free world. Not everything in this world is smooth sailing. 
There are repercussions in this world. Sometimes a person says, you know, I, I made a misstep, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. It's called Yirat HaOnesh. Afraid of punishment. What if a person doesn't have Eira and then he says, Hashem, I regret this sin. By the way, you know, halachically, Teshuvah, people don't understand even what Teshuvah is. They think, you know, Rosh Hashanah comes, let me quickly write a check to Tzedakah. That's very nice. That has nothing to do with Teshuvah. Teshuvah is very simple. Three steps. Vidoy, confession. You say, God, I sinned. I'm not beating around the bush. I'm not making believe it didn't happen. I'm not giving excuses. Chatati, I sin. Confession. Number two, charata, regret. And then, committing not to do it again. You got that? Three steps. Confession, regret, accepting not to do it again. But it depends what the motivation is. Why are we doing the teshuvah? If someone does teshuvah out of fear, the Gemara teaches, the sin is not removed completely. It's downgraded. I'll give you mashal. They, they have a traffic cops over here in Panama. They have uh, police over here. What happens if somebody speeds? They give tickets? Yes. Not really. <laughs> There's a planet called America. Okay? America is a planet in, the, in one of the galaxies in the universe called the United States of America. And then there's another planet called Brooklyn. Okay? In the planet of Brooklyn, if you speed, the cop comes, gives you a ticket. The ticket has two parts to it. First, you've got to pay $350. And then you get points off your license. You know about this? You get points. If you get too many points... They take away your license. So what do you have to do? You know, so, so here's how they trap you. There's a highway, you could go 65 miles an hour, and all of a sudden, they put a sign, 25 miles an hour, and then the cop is standing right there while you're trying to slow down, and you're going 55 on a 25 mile an hour, so he stops you, ticket, points on the license, 350 bucks. So what do you do? You have to hire an attorney. So what does the attorney do? It's going to be very hard to get the ticket off completely. What you hope the attorney could do is he makes a deal with the judge that the judge will be mochel the points. In other words, you get the points off. You pay the 350 bucks because it's worth it not to have the points on your license. If you have points on your license, your insurance premiums skyrocket. So this way you pay the money, you pay the attorney. That's basically as good as you're going to hope for. It's the same, similar with teshuvah. If a person does teshuvah out of fear, God says, okay, that's a, a pretty good teshuvah. I'm going to downgrade the avera from intentional to unintentional. So the sin is not completely cleaned. It's going to be downgraded. It's like, you know, you still have to pay the fine, but without the points, it's going to be downgraded to unintentional. Says the Gemara, but what if a person does teshuvah out of love? He says, God, I love you so much. I made a mistake. I didn't mean to disobey your command. The Gemara says, a wondrous chidush. If a person does teshuvah out of love, the avera not only disappears, it is, not only is it wiped out, it is transformed into mitzvah. You get a mitzvah. So here it is. Somebody didn't know. They grew up, they were eating non-kosher. Later on in life, they learned this mitzvah of eating kosher food. All the times they ate McDonald's, it is transformed into like eating karban pesach in the Beit HaMikdash. Don't try that at home. Don't go to McDonald's and then they do teshuvah. Any avera that a person repents with teshuva me'ahava, teshuva out of love, the sin is transformed into mitzvah. Do you know by Ashkenazim on Yom Kippur, we say vidoy. Do you say the confession together? We sing it. We sing. Maybe you have your own tune. 
But it's almost absurd that we would be singing all the Averot that we did, you know? We stole, we committed this crime, and we murdered. Ah, na, 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 na. Why are we singing our sins? We should sing it mournfully, like we sing Echa, like we're Ba'avelut. Why are we happily singing our sins? The Sfarim teach, because when we're doing Teshuvah, our goal is not just to do regular, ordinary, pedestrian Teshuvah. We want to do premium Teshuvah. We want to do Teshuvah out of love. And if we do Teshuvah out of love, all the Averot are turning into mitzvot. So we sing our sins because they're not sins, they're mitzvot. You know, on Rosh Hashanah, the, the custom is to eat a food that means many. So Ashkenazim eat carrots. In Yiddish, carrots are merim, more. But the custom is to eat a food that it means more. And we say it's filah. Yihirat son v'fanecha Hashem alokeinu malokeinu v'seinu she'yir be'zichuyoteinu. God Almighty, may it be your will that our merits be increased. I don't understand. That's ridiculous tefillah. I'm sitting there at my table. I'm doing nothing. And I'm asking God to increase my merits. You want to increase your merits? Go do mitzvot. God can do a mitzvot for you. You know, there's a concept. Everything is bidei shamayim chutz miyirat shamayim. God runs the world except for your personal free choice. So how could you pray, God, increase my merit? The answer is what we're asking God is help us do teshuvah me ahava. Help us do teshuvah out of love. If we do teshuvah out of love, all of our sins will be upgraded and elevated into mitzvot. And thereby our merits will increase very quickly. You ever notice that on Rosh Hashanah we blow shofar at least two times? First we blow shofar before Musaf and then we blow shofar during the Musaf. Why do we blow shofar twice? The Gemara teaches us to confuse the Satan. Rashi says, what are we, how are we in, uh, confusing the Satan? Says Rashi, when the Satan sees how much we love mitzvot, he runs away. So the question is, why would the Satan run away because he sees how much we love mitzvot? If we love mitzvot so much, the Satan should try even harder to tell God how many Averot we violated. Why is the Satan running away? You ready for this? If we love the mitzvot, then the Satan is worried that what kind of teshuvah are we doing? We're not doing teshuvah out of fear, we're doing teshuvah out of love. Then every Avera that the Satan is reading to God, God says, great, they did that Avera, but now it's a mitzvah. So the Satan feels he's working against himself. So once he sees that we love the mitzvot, he says, I'm out of here. Says Maran Ge'on Uzeinu Rechida, Reb Chaim Yosef David Azulai. Now, people ask me, you're Ashkenazi rabbi, why are you always quoting the Chida? And I tell you a little secret. In 1945, after the Holocaust, my grandfather was liberated from the death camps. He knew English, so he was made the head of the religious department of the American Joint Distribution Committee. So the American ha- army hired him, he was a Polish survivor, and they gave him a jeep, they gave him an army uniform, and he was able to ship in to all the survivors, Talei Sim, Tfilin, he built mikvaot, he built uh, girls' schools, boys' schools, and he published the first Sfarim for the survivors. The first Sefer my grandfather published for the survivors was the Sefer of the Chida. So I feel that I have a special connection to the Chida because that was the first Sefer my grandfather published for the survivors. Says the Chida, it's the month of Elul. But we need to remind ourselves, what type of Teshuvah are we going to do in the month of Elul? Don't settle for average Teshuvah. Don't settle, you know, I wanna, I'm worried, Rosh Hashanah is coming, I want to have a healthy year, I want Parnasah, I'm worried, that's a low level Teshuvah. You want to 
aim for premium teshuva. What's premium teshuva? Teshuva me'ahava out of love. And therefore we remind ourselves, Ani lidodi vidodi li. I am for my beloved. The teshuva I want to do this month is the teshuva out of love for Hashem. Did you hear about the shidduch that was made? Oh, boy, wait till you hear about this. The son of the richest man in town, excuse me, the daughter of the richest man in town, he meets a boy, good boy, nice boy. The father is Ani the Avion, the father doesn't have a penny. But it's a nice shidduch, and they got engaged. And the wedding was a few weeks ago. So here was the deal. The father of the bride says to the groom, I'm going to pay for everything. I know your father, what does he do already? Your father's a shoemaker. I'm going to pay for everything. I'm going to pay for the hall. In America we have an expression, flops. Yeah? I'm going to pay for the caterer and the liquor and the orchestra and the, and the pictures and the S and the shetel also. You don't know about this yet? You'll find out. Flops, that's what it's called. So the father of the groom says, what do I have to pay for? You know, I'm going to be embarrassed. You're paying for everything? He says, don't worry, it's not a big deal. Just do me a favor, buy your kid a nice suit. Okay, he can't even afford a nice suit. So he takes him to like, you know, um, a bargain basement store and he buys his son a decent suit. They're coming to the wedding. It's a rainy day. The boy is coming out of the car. He trips. He fell. He ripped his suit. It's all muddy. He looks like a beggar. He walks into the wedding hall. The father of the bride says, I don't understand. I told you I'm covering everything. All you needed to do is buy the kid a decent suit. And now he looks like a shlamazel shlamil, they say in Yiddish. He said, look, now I'm going to cover this. This one's on me. But when I buy the suit, I'm not taking him to the bargain basement. I'm bringing in a custom tailor. I'm bringing in the finest garment maker in town. And I'm going to buy him, not your kind of suit, my kind of suit. Says the Dubna Magid. He says, this is a parable. Gemara teaches us, B'makom sheba'alei teshuva omdim ein sadikim gemurim yichalim la'amor. In a place where people who do teshuva stand, even the most righteous people don't stand. You see, it's tzaddik gamor, someone who never committed av- avera, is very limited in the merits that, that they have. How many mitzvot ase are there in the Torah? There are only 248 positive commandments in the Torah. So someone who's a big tzaddik, he maxes out at 248 mitzvot. But someone who is a Baal Teshuvah, who maybe committed Averot in the past, and now comes and do, does Teshuvah, every Avera turns into a Mitzvah. They're going to be on a much higher level than the Tzadik Amor. But even more than that. You see, if somebody does a Mitzvah, if any of us do a Mitzvah, and we do it, as well as we can, as perfect as we can, the mitzvah is always going to be limited by human shortcoming. Even if we do a mitzvah properly, was it with complete Ahavat Hashem? Was it with complete Yirat Shamayim? Did we fulfill every detail of the mitzvah? It's impossible, we're human beings. But if a person does an Avera, and then they do Teshuvah, Who's giving you the zuchot? Who's giving you the mitzvah? God is giving you the mitzvah. And when God gives you the mitzvah, He's not giving you your kind of mitzvah. He's giving you His kind of mitzvah. And when God gives you the mitzvah, it's the most beautiful mitzvah imaginable. But you'll say, are we on the level of loving Hashem? That's a very high level to love Hashem. And the answer is, even though it's a very high level to love Hashem, you could even teach a child to love Hashem. Harav Avigdor Miller, Zeretzak Lebracha would say, at least once a day, 
Say to yourself, I love you, Hashem. You're embarrassed? He would say, you know, they used to have telephone bo- uh, booths. Go into a telephone booth and make a long distance phone call. Nowadays, I say it's much easier. Nowadays, you put in your earpiece and you talk to yourself on the street. Everyone else in the street is talking to themselves. At least once a day, you say to yourself, you say to Hashem, I love you, Hashem. Don't let a day in your life go by without being mekayim. It's a mitzvah in the Torah. The ahavta is Hashem alokecha. Don't let one day, in fact, Sifrei Halacha say, in the morning, even before you eat breakfast, you don't even want to put a morsel of food in your mouth unless you know you fulfilled that day the great mitzvah of love for Hashem. After all, Hashem is your father. Halohu avicha. You know, we say in Kriyat Shema, Ve'ohavta et Hashem alokecha. You should love God. How could Hashem say we have to love Him? You like broccoli? Some people don't like broccoli. Imagine if I tell them, love broccoli! So look, if I like it, I like it. If I don't like it, I don't. You, you can't tell me what to love, who to love. How could God say we have to love Him? The answer is if somebody loves you, then it's natural to love them back. When you look at your reflection in the water, your reflection is looking back at you. If someone loves you, you instinctively love them back. We say in the tefillah, God selects the Jewish people with love. So it's only natural, Hashem says, The month of Elul, we have to focus on not settling for regular teshuvah. You want to upgrade your teshuvah to teshuvah me'ahava, teshuvah out of love. Remember Hashem is your loving Father. I'll end with this story. Many years ago, my grandfather was a rabbi in Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh, for 70 years. So one of the uh, jobs a rabbi has to do is you have to conduct an unveiling. You have to preside over an unveiling. Somebody puts up Matseva, a monument. The rabbi comes. You know, you say a chapter of Tehillim. And the family comes to pray by the graveside. At the time, my grandfather wasn't well. So he asked my father to uh, take his place. So this man was not an observant man. He was six foot five, western Pennsylvanian man. Takes my father, he was a gruff and rough man. He picks him up in a pickup truck and they go to the cemetery. And the man is showing my father, Rabbi! All of us are here in the cemetery. My father didn't know what he meant. What do you mean all of us? said, here's the grave of my aunt, the grave of my uncle, my brother, my sister, my grandfather. And he's showing off the family graves like you'd be showing off a bottle cap collection without any emotion. He says to my father, this is the grave of my son. No emotion. And then he shows my father the grave of his father and mother who passed away 50 years before. And this big 6 foot 5, 300 pound man breaks down crying like a baby. What is the most powerful relationship in this world? What is the most powerful love in this world? Husband and wife? Most people would say parent to, to, to child. In a certain sense, it's child to parent. This might be surprising because it's the first love implanted in your heart when you're born. When a person is born, the first love they have is to their father and mother. In a way, it's the most basic love in the world. Hashem is our father. We naturally love Him. We just have to access the love that's latent in our heart and use that to motivate us to do teshuva me'ahava. And if, we're, if we merit to repent out of love, then it will hit the jackpot because not only will we clean our neshamot, but all the averot we may have done 
will be transformed into mitzvot, and when Yom Kippur comes, we'll sing the great song of all the great mitzvot that we accomplished through Teshuvah Me'ahava. Let me wish you all Shana Tova Mevorechet. Thank you very much. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.